start recording. Sorry. Here we go. All right. So let's go through um, the investigation. Um, all right. So I kind of did. Some of you might have been here for the last class, but I kind of had to start this over one because I'm recording um, this uh, for future people to watch, perhaps in years to come. But um, oh, also like so we've got a mixture of people who were there and who were not. So let's look at a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to download the direct investigation. All right. So we can't do the same ones we did last year because some of you were, um, some of you are repeating uh, the course. So we had to come up with another one. Now this one um, was not one that we got given from an old um, uh, mass association um, uh, booklet. Um, Mr. Sammy found it, and I went and adapted it for the purposes of making it new Sacy. And you'll see what I mean um, on the last few pages, like particularly the um, guideline and the yeah, assessment. That's that's all like how it's marked and how many pages you got. You can read that part later on. I just kind of want to introduce this insofar as you understand how the data is generated and how this math mathematical model is going to be done so all right let's just let's just find a nicer way to do this so i want to go read mode and i want to um i want no let's not do that one all right all right i want page width there we go so now we can see it on the screen all right so, um, we topics on communicable disease, and okay, you can start like uh, researching this kind of sorts of terms, but you might be quite familiar with this. But uh, as so as as the times that we live in, this is actually um, uh, we found this, dug this up on um, yeah. This, so this this assignment was conceived um, a long time ago, but um, uh, like probably ten years, but um, seems to be a little bit more um, relatable um, these days. Okay. So, okay, so communicable diseases, okay, we're, yeah, sorry, we're dancing around it you know, with COVID and, you know, kind of like terms like flattening, flattening the curve, um, uh, isolation, mask wearing, close contacts, um, testing, uh, all those sorts of things you're um, very much familiar with. It's, it's, um, it's been stuck in your brain because these uh, formative years of your life, you've had to uh, go through this stuff. Uh, Okay, and um, a lot of these things are based around, like, so particularly things like flattening the curve and all the um, control measures, all based around kind of modeling. Um, and modeling, it's, um, it's kind of a science. Um, I mean, there's science involved in it, and it's also kind of like, okay, let's just uh, extrapolate what might happen. And it's, kind of, it's a lot of guesswork. Um, and models are frequently wrong because, okay, um, they, they're just... You, do the best we can with what you have, and then you've got to go back and continually check them. And sometimes that causes controversy because it's like, okay, you got it wrong, and you caused this to happen. Um, but this is this is basically what they use to justify everything that you've had to go through the last couple of years, um, for better or worse. Okay, um, and uh, we're going to use a random number generator. Um, this. This, well, is that we don't have a name for this particular modeling technique. Um, in general, it's just called modeling. It's, uh, okay. Um, uh, you mean disease modeling in general? There is actually a term for that. Um, I'm going to give beep, beep. Uh, okay, you can add that to your research. Um, why, don't you, why don't you tell me in a couple of days? Uh, it's, it's on the tip of my tongue. I just can't remember. It's, um, it's also not my field of science. But uh, um, I was going to say... if. Let's not go on that one. It's um, I I know kind of like there's a lot of kind of like people even 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 outside of um, medicine like people in um, uh, I I can I can understand this better in um finance terms like actuaries look at oh how likely is it um particularly something like life insurance how likely is it at your age your profession your me uh, your medical history. Uh, your behavioral um, things, how likely is it for you to become injured, um, disabled, unable to work or die? Um, and um, a lot of kind of statistics is put into that sort of stuff in a lot of models. Um, in, in our case, we're, we're doing communicable diseases and there is actually a branch 
of um, uh, yeah, the mathematics and medicine, um, uh, science in, related to this. <clears throat> okay, random number generation Excel spread. She can use to simulate the spread of disease in the following manner. Consider in the following situation. All right, Mrs. Curie is a um, Mrs. Curie of a highly contagious disease called mathematosis. Unaware that she's carrying disease, she continued to teach her year 12 maths class. The students in the class interact with random, but have contact which is significant enough to transfer the disease to one other person per day. A clever student generates some data to simulate the situation by setting up a spreadsheet, a section of which is shown below. Okay, a full class list uh, will be provided. I've actually gone and done that. Um, just have a look. Well, well, I'll explain that in a minute, but maybe I'll have a brief explanation of how this is generated. Okay, so on day one, you can see Mrs. Curie is involved. Okay, so um, uh, you can count this as day zero. So she's involved, no one else is involved. All right, okay. You have a, a program, uh, which I'll show you in a minute, which generates the random numbers. The numbers that are generated are between two and whatever the, the end of the list goes to. You can modify this um, and I have, for one of my examples, I've actually written two class lists, one slightly larger than the other. Uh, you can modify this, um, these spreadsheets, which you have access to. You can change the names. You can, um, you can change how, they're, uh, how they're, the thing is done. Um, but uh, regardless, um, the, the, I will explain to you how um, this is, this is uh, how this is predicted. So what happens is, okay, it just happens to roll a five. Now, what the five means is, uh, so Mr. Curie rolled a five in that one. All right, it's in class, and it's, okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, on day one, student five will be infected as well. Any other student had contact with, um, to, uh, with number two. So, you see, uh, what it means is, okay, there's, um, okay, there's, uh, each person has, has close contact with someone else long enough such that they will get the disease. Um, so you know, um, for Miss Curry, she's the infected one. So whoever she rolls will be infected on the next day. Okay, but Margaret Thatcher also had contact with Miss Curry. So that works in reverse. So if you had contact with someone who was carrying disease, yeah, that role works that way too. You don't have to worry about anything else. So Felix here, uh, Pootie Pie, um, he's 19, but he doesn't get infected until the next day. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, no, not 19. Um, you will check for fives and twos, and anyone who is infected will go on and infect anyone that they roll. Yeah. Uh, Felix is not infected. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, 90, yes, correct, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so he would be bold in the next column. So you'd, um, you'd make Curie there, yeah, see, but Philly, uh, sorry, 90 is not listed here because it's only a brief list. All right, um, and okay, I might just go through and switch over this stage to the spreadsheet so we can have a look at that. All right, okay, so this is my class list for sharing. Um, so I might look at, Actually, I'm going to go, this is this one. I might just show you something. Okay, I'll show you a couple of things here. So this is, um, I've got like class two. I've got a, um, so this is my second class. I actually deleted the other class. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, I'll show you. Yes, that's the first thing I'm going to show you. Okay, um, so I'm going to zoom that right in. Okay, now I've got slightly more people than the class list has. I also, um, the formatting of the command that I put into the spreadsheet is slightly different. Now, in every single cell where there's a number, there's this. Int rand, um, the random number, times by uh, two, uh, 29 minus 2 plus 2. Okay. Um, what that does, okay, so basically, um, there's actually only, uh, okay, if you count them, because cell 1, uh, sorry, row 1, is, uh, it's got like, um, categorical label, not um, numbers. All right, so it actually starts, um, there's, okay, you count from two to, uh, there's actually 27 people. That's why you times by 27. Um, a little thing about random number, you can check that on your calculator. This, all this does is generates a random number which is between zero and one. All right, 
Um, the thing about that is, um, is extremely unlikely to actually get one. So, okay. So mine's slightly different is the fact that you see there's actually, I've times by 27 and there are actually 27 people there. Uh, whereas I think their list, they, they, they're slightly different with their numbers. Um, and then I add two. So because it can actually is, um, uh, anything that's 0, 0.0 number, um, is going to round down. Because the int operation automatically rounds anything down. So even if it's like, if it's, um, you end up with 7.99999, it'll round down to seven. Always rounds down. <coughs> so that's why I add two. Because you can actually, if it's actually, um, uh, without the plus two, it would actually generate zero to 27. Now it will generate, um, no, it will generate zero to 26 uh now it will generate 2 to 28 and you can check that if you modify your um assignment anyway so i'm just going to go back out you can uh check that by using the random number processing now random number processing is very easy just do anything uh and the cells automatically change boom so i'm just pressing backspace they're different every single time you press them all right. Um, okay. Are you looking at class two? Are you looking at example? All right. Class two should. Uh, you might want to check to see if you've got other cells actually this or are they just numbers? Okay. Yeah. Now, you don't want them to move when you're actually going about doing this. Um, so for the purpose of this, I might um, go and I'll make another. I've done, I've done an example here. Uh, this is one I've completed, so this is kind of like, okay, this is the one I've already cooked up um, for the purpose of that investigation. I will start one here. I'll show you what you do. All right. Uh, looks like I was, um, yeah, that's one I started. I'll get rid of that one. All right. Yep. Okay. So, all right, let's just take this one. Now, while you're working on this, so any command you make is going to make it um, regenerate. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to copy everything. We're going to open up a new work area. So add a sheet here. And what we're going to do is pay special values only. Boom. Okay. I'm also going to grab a, um, a template of a little working space here. Okay. And I'll show you how to do this in an efficient manner. Now you can work... Um, you, um, later on the assignment, you will be kind of called to kind of modify uh, your um, procedural generation um, and how you go about calculating the and predictions later on. One of the features, yep, go ahead. Okay, yeah, you paste, yeah, so the question was, how do you do values only? Paste special values only. Uh, and you can see what happens in the cells is not equals int random blah 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 times this plus that is just 15. Okay, so that, yeah, you can test it. That's not changing. All right, so that's good. All right, now, let me just show you, we're gonna go through this together and you might wanna watch um, watch this again when, you've got, when the recording's done and we can see how this goes about. Start off, okay, so the, it always starts to miss security. Now, one of the interesting features of the assignment is um, they never actually go and isolate. And test. So that's I'm I'm interested to see what would happen. I might do another video and I'll, I'll show you. Okay, maybe you could change the assignment and make the um uh, make the data do this. Um, and then this would um this would uh, simulate flattening the curve. And then you can say okay, <coughs> um, and see what happens in that respect. All right, but basically okay. So Mrs. Curry basically is there for that many days. Now basically I haven't done anything past day seven because I've never seen. Um, the a need to uh, usually this thing completes by about day four day five, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so on day zero there is one person, and I'm just going to write that's person number two. Total sick is one. Okay, on day one, okay day one, Mrs. Curry goes and gets um, a patty of Alexandria. Let's actually make the list a little bit larger so we can see all the funny names. Okay, she gets sick. Uh, no, uh, so she is number seven. So Mrs. Curie gets that inspected. Now, 
Um, on now you look now once you've done that, so all the people who are sick, see who they're in contact with. Those person people will be caught will be sick on the next day. Okay. Well, that's how we generate. If you go back and have a look at this, um, this is why we did this. She's um, yeah. There is no person one or zero. Okay. Uh, in that sense, see that that's why we do the int random thing, like in the set up the way we do. So the random numbers only go from two to uh, twenty eight. I mean, you can modify the thing and say okay, and make it roll different numbers and say, well, that that's if they roll like a a twenty nine thirty or zero one, that's a chance that okay, it it was a close contact, but the person did not get sick, um, or they or that might re represent that. Um, uh, they um, did not, um, they um, spent the day on the beach and did not have close contact with anyone. Um, yeah, you can you can modify it uh, later on. And that's kind of like, if you're doing a thoughtful um, and uh, explanatory way, explore the investigation beyond what we're telling you to do, um, that's, um, and you, you explain it as good math and good um, reasoning behind it, that's what's going to get you the, um, uh, the money marks. Um, all right. But, okay, so now we're going to look at, um, you look at the rest of the people and you see who ha who is in contact with the people who were sick the previous day. So you don't look at any 18, uh, any 7s or um, 18, because 18 will be sick next day. Um, so if you have a look, so basically I'm just checking for anyone who rolled a 2. Because Mrs. Curry was the only person sick the previous day 0. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, okay. We're kind of learning the rules of the game. It's going to take a while for this to kick in, uh, and then once you kind of master that, then the, um, uh, you can kind of like you go through do the assignment, and you can adapt it um the way you like. Uh, day one, and also who the people get sick. We'll do day two as well for sure. All right, all right. So there's actually no one rolled a two, so um that was actually a, a rather slow start, um in that respect. So only only Mrs. Curry got one person sick, and no one else. Had contact with Mrs. Curry. Uh, twenty-two. Um, no, they see that. Um, if they rolled that the next day, good point. Yeah, yeah. That this is yeah. Why I'm trying to explain this and go through this. Yeah. Um, uh, Hepatia does not um is not symptomatic and expressing the virus. I'm not going to go through like asymptomatic spread because that's a controversial issue that's um that's uh, been discussed and might uh, end up not being true. But the history decided about that um, in due course. But yeah, effectively, our model, uh, just because, yeah, okay, so um, Mrs. Curry um, decided to sneeze on Hepatia, um, but she doesn't actually get anyone else, else sick until the next day. All right, so the list is now uh, two and seven. Yep. They would um, be on the old sick list. No, they would be, they would be sick on day one, and um, they would go on to get people sick on day two. Um, I put them in the, uh, I put them in day two, um, day one. Yeah, well, anyone, yeah, uh, in this case, yeah, anyone on day one who rolls a two, and any any twos later on. Yeah, because Mrs. Curry stays in the classroom um, getting people sick. Um, so, um, and there's, there's a, there's a um, we get, this is going to translate into um, functions that we'll talk about later on. Uh, yes, correct. Um, that's how we start the assignment. We always start it with one, there's one um, uh, uh, patient zero. Yeah, all right. Um, which would be interesting if you start modifying the, the way this is done and you actually end up like getting, um, you, yeah, there's another um, expression that came out called crushing the curve where you, you're that restrictive that you used to stop the spread of the virus and you end up with things like COVID zero policies, which was what we were doing for the last couple of years in Adelaide and what China was doing. And now China's got a bunch of new infections and we've got a bunch of infections because um, uh, we decided um, to forego natural immunity. Um, okay, anyway. Get off that stuff. <coughs> so anyone who's as infected the previous day, it's still infected. Okay. Um, and they can go and infect other people. So Mrs. Curry, 
can will go in effect uh, until it, well, you know, so I've, uh, too many Russians on my list. Um, and I'm sorry, PewDiePie, you now infected. Um, so, okay. Now, uh, on day two, so look at the rest of them. We are checking now for anyone who had contact with anyone who was sick uh, day one. All right. Uh, so we're looking for twos and sevens. Oh, there's one. We did get one. Okay. Just double check. Okay. Any other twos or sevens? Okay. Um, Hypatia was sick that day. She now is in con. She now brought a five and was in contact with PewDiePie. All right. So the people who are sick on the list now. We have uh, two, five, seven, fifteen. And twenty-seven. This is actually one of the slower um growths I've seen so far. Um, so five. Okay. Uh it's. I've tried to play this. I actually expanded the list to see if that will happen. Um, I the there's a like is a the question was is slow better or fast better? Um, well, it depends on what you measure. Like in the case of the experiment, I kind of want it slow just for the purpose of um. The longer it takes for everyone to get infected, the more, um, the better I could think the logistic growth model, uh, which is um, what we'll talk about later on. We won't have time for it because we're basically we'll just go through the operation of doing this and maybe uh, maybe I'll translate the data that we're getting. So maybe we'll continue with this one because it's actually quite interesting so far. Um, yeah, they are still sick and they're still in contact with people. That's something you can change about the model later on. Uh, if you so choose to, because it, um, it's not the way we do things anymore. Okay, so I'm highlighting everyone who's sick the previous day. All right, now I'm going to check. Um, when you get to about this point, sometimes they can, like, kind of, like, get in contact. They're in contact with someone who's already sick, um, and that's uh, uh, that's kind of pointless, but we have a look. Okay, so, yeah, so in that case, um, 27 was already sick. 25 is not. Okay. All right, Hannah Rabbi. Okay. Um, 22 <coughs> is not <coughs> 9, <coughs> Elizabeth Holmes, and the other person, it was them, and they got 18 sick. Number 3, uh, why not, oh yeah, yeah, okay, and now we're going to look at, um, who, yeah, so looking for 2, well, look, actually, um, a way to do this is you can kind of check off your last sick list. So check for 2, 5, 7, 15, or 27. So we have, um, and this is going to happen quite fast. So 2, 7. All right, 4, they're safe. 28, they're safe. 20, yep. 25, yep. 21, 25, 28. 14 is fine. 7, they're sick. 11, 15, they're sick. 8, that's fine. 3, they're fine. 12, they're fine. 6, and 7. Okay, now you've got a big... Growth. All right, so we've got we've got whoop. All right, so let's have a look here at our list. All right, uh, we've got two to five. So I'm going to start writing like this: two to five, comma. All right, um, seven. <coughs> uh, seven, nine, um, fifteen. 17, 18. Missed a comma. Oops. Don't like that. Future. All right. 17, 18. So I'm up to here. Uh, 20, 22. Uh, let's go through and check. Um, and there's a bit of practice. You get this stuff right. Um, and then at the end of the day, um, um, I'm going, I'm probably unlikely to actually go through and actually check every single one of these sheets because you're probably not going to print all of them anyway. You might just show one as an example. Just make sure you get the, the one you demonstrate in your summit, right? Because this stuff takes up a lot of space. If you, if you want to say, okay, here's my modeling. Here's how it works. Here's an example. Okay. I repeated this for a large group. I did this. I changed the experiment to do that. These are the results. You probably, what you'll copy more often is your kind of day zero, one, two, three, sick list and total sick. And then do the graphs that we'll talk about. 
in a future lesson. Um, so you will not be copying a lot of these um, spreadsheets over. Maybe you only need one, um, unless you make um, substantial changes that you need to explain. It's not words. Yep. Yeah, you have a look at that um, page before the, um, the, the marking table. It's got all the things that you need to know in relation to that. <coughs> okay. So, have I got everyone? Uh, yes, and, and you can't read that too well. Unfortunate. Maybe I'll just move this across, okay. Okay. Um, and I'm going to... Yep, you can do that. You can make... Um, so, you could say, like, um, someone could... Um, you could set up a list that, okay, like... Uh, PewDiePie, he just stays um, in his basement making videos. Like, so he has contact with nobody. So it's fine. Um, he just goes to class. So he just rolls once. And then you have uh, Taylor Swift, Tay Tay. Um, she goes uh, to all the parties. So you might just make like uh, Tay Tay during the day, Tay Tay at night, Tay Tay on the weekend, and see who she has contact with. Um, it's, it's like, this is the idea, direct investigation. It's... Uh, uh, we we kind of showing you. Okay, here's the directed part. Here's how. Um, here's our. This is our model of this. How we're doing this. Uh, and then you can take the experiment in um, weird and wild directions. Uh, so long as you explain what you're doing, it makes sense. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, we're about at. Um, what did I say? It was twenty-seven people. Yes. So we're, we're past the halfway mark. I can't hear what that says. All right. Um, we've got eight minutes. So I'm going to just going to quickly see if I can get the, the, the next one done. It might actually be 100% at that point. All right. Um, I'm hoping not. So I'm highlighting everyone who's already... Um... No. And the PD didn't happen. I, I ch used chat with um, Mr. Sammy. Um... Yeah, that's a uh, interesting story. I went all the way to the city, um, had a little adventure. I caught the um, the express bus, um, and then I found out actually um, the whole thing was cancelled. That was interesting. Okay, don't understand how hard this that is. We haven't seen it. I haven't. I haven't even written it. Oh, like, calculus is not meant to be simple. All right. Get good. All right, so 21 gets sick, and they're not sick already. All right, so that's her. All right, 16 gets sick. She, yeah, she wasn't sick before. 10 wasn't sick. 10, Muhammad Ali's now sick. 12. Max Planck was already sick. Um, 27 was, um, someone who was sick the day before. Two, yeah, there was, that's his contact again with Miss Curry. Uh, Chris, uh, Susano Ronaldo, um, contact with 17, 17 is sick. Two is sick. Oh, whoops, I skipped over that. 11, uh, 11 is Tay Tay's already sick. Um, Muhammad, no, sorry. Oh, sorry, I stuffed this up. I just realized what I did. Okay, so I'll do it like that. Okay, sorry. I just kind of got myself, I'm getting people who just got sick, got other people sick. That, that's what you're not meant to do. So I changed my style and... Yep, that's, um, that sounds like a good um, way to organize that. And you can go and explain that on your thing. And you can explain how um, you went about doing that. That's kind of cool. I like that idea. So uh, give it a try, see, how, see if it works. All right, so these are people. So I'm just going to do it. I, I used to do this, um, I try to rush it then. Try to do it in two stages. We've got five minutes. So see if we can do get day four done. And we, we're almost at day five. I think under, it's either going to be 100% day four, day five, because we had slow growth, but then it just snapped, and we had like extra, nine extra people. All right. Guys, shh. Okay. So let's have a look. Um, just going through people who previous day were sick. All right. So we got 21... All right, I'm just going to go with that one. Okay, so 21 is sick now. Uh, 16 gets sick. 
Seven. He's already sick. Ten. Muhammad Ali. Twelve. Thanks, Plank. Um, Twenty-two. He's already sick. Ten. I didn't highlight them. Why not? Um, ten was sick the previous day. Ten gets a Okay. No, I'm moving them all in. Two, yeah. All right, 11, um, Tay Tay. All right, they just got sick. Tay Tay just got sick. They just got sick. Um, okay, they're not sick, not sick. All right, 22 is already sick. 11 just got sick. 22 is already sick. Um, three is already sick. All right, 22 is already sick. They just got sick. 17 is already sick. Uh, 6 is not sick yet. Puchos, Puchos, Gully. They're already sick. 4 is already sick. Alright, now I'm just going to check the ones who... Um, see if they had contact with anyone who was sick on the previous day. Alright, so go back to... Yes, 20 is was sick the previous day. 22 was... 16 wasn't. Okay, one person survived. Um, 24 were... No. 11... Uh, no. 13, no. Um, 17, yes. All right. So not everyone. All right. So, 21... Okay, sorry, through this one. Two to. Guys, what are you chatting about? That's too much. All right. Uh, 15 to 18. Yeah. Uh, 20 to 22. And then 20. Four to twenty-eight. All right. Then go by day four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, two, one, two, three, twenty-three. All right. So twenty-three. All right. Um. Quickly. Okay. I see, um, so in the next day, I'm, I'm actually just, I'm just going to take a wild guess and just say all 27 people are actually sick. All right. So, actually, maybe I won't, I won't do that. Okay. So, I just want to do in the, in the five minutes. Okay. Let's just see if we can get a quick data plot, what that looks like in two minutes. That's delves a little bit early. All right. Um, unless... No, the growth rate will. It comes up in logistic growth. Um, yeah, bends up and flans out. Asthmatope. Yeah. Um, the uh, the derivative of um, okay. Let's just uh, I, I'll just show you what. Uh, let's just um, I'll just copy out logistic growth. I'll explain what I mean. Uh, because this the data plot should actually look. Let's see if I can just copy that. Oh, it has to be a picture, doesn't it? Um. Uh, okay. Why don't I just uh, see if I can make one up? All right. All right. Carrying capacity. Let's just say we've got 27. All right. Okay. 27 divided by 1 plus uh, E. Um, okay. Let's just check that one. That looks like the inflation is happening before that, though. There we go. That's a little bit. Okay. Now, this is not indicative of this one. But that's the kind of what you should be looking at. They say, okay, so I want to have to start at, um, at one, though. Yeah, one person, uh, or approximate. But you see, you get this thing. It has an inflection point. The inflection point generally happens 
about 50% up. Um, and I'm going to do a quick, this is the last thing we'll do, and then I'll stop the recording. Okay. Um, so I actually try to model one off what we've um, actually found, <clears throat> maybe for the next video. But let's have a look what F, so you did mention, a, so Dumalak mentioned um, they, he thought it might be a bell curve. Um, the, it, um, it's not, you're not too far off in your thinking because it's actually, the der derivative is a bell curve. Uh, or it looks like one anyway. Uh, and that's the, its maximum. Because, okay, when they talk about flattening the curve, they're not talking about total cases. They're like, the total cases goes up like that. And then you, you reach the peak of your population. Because you can't, the total recorded case and can't, um, unless you get reinfections, but generally you don't do it like that. Um, or you try to avoid that. Um, and um, yeah, so that like all 27 people, so everyone's got it at some point. Um, but the, where the inflation occurs, that is the peak of your bell curve. So yeah, it um, the rate of change. So the flatten the when they say flattening the curve, they're actually talking about like new cases per day. And you could have actually done it like that. I could have written, and this is another way you can take the the uh, one more thing. I'll say okay, uh, new cases. All right, new cases today. That was zero, one. Um, okay, three, nine, and uh, what's that? An increase of I'm picking up another nine. Yeah, um, you keep going, and like basically, you just it would end up flattening out. Like you might have one more, uh, but you see, there's a there's a peak, and it's going to flatten out. Yeah, if you do this for a, a huge number of people, you would actually get something involved. Yeah, something more like a bell curve for that. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for your patience. Um, I'm going to stop the recording, and I'll upload this at some point if it works this time. Fingers crossed. Okay. All right, you can go to your next class. Oh, it's a double. Oh, silly me. Uh, well, why am I rushing then? Um, okay. All right, let's... Uh, um, what else did I want to say, though? Okay, well, in that case... Oh, sorry. I've got my days mixed up. All right, double methods. Cool. In that case, let's actually go and graph the data. And so, actually, let's finish it off. Okay, so we're going to extend the recording. Let's finish it off. So this is only going to go for another day or two at most. All right, highlight everyone who's already sick. This is almost, you can almost do this in another way. Um, okay. Okay. Now, basically, you can just go and look at the um, the uninfected. Okay. Infected, they got contact with two. Infected, they had contact with five. Um, 15, it was infected the previous days. Yep, 15. Um, and who else? 21, they're infected. Okay, that is 100%. Okay, so in that case, uh, okay, total sick. Um, all right. So, just checking. Okay, it is 20, yeah, 27 people. Okay. Uh, so, new cases, the increase in cases would be four. All right. Um, so let's go back here. So I kind of demonstrated what we should be looking at, uh, but these aren't actually the functions. So I'm just going to keep them off. All right. What is though? Okay. Now let's see if I remember how I how we do this. Okay. So let's just shrink this. Okay. So when you get the classless, okay, you can go have a look at the data, and I'm going to do some decimals. Now you can also do this on your TI, and um, and I believe that's how you would actually go about finding the function fitting. I just want to do it on here first. Um, okay, let's see if I remember how we do this. Um, blah, 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 blah. Day zero, one. Okay. So you run the list like this. One. Okay, day one is two. Yep, that's fine. Date. Day two. Bracket two, five. Uh, <clears throat> day three, sorry, again, day three is 14. Day four is 23. And day 
day five is uh, 27. All right. <coughs> okay. Then basically from there, it will just be 27s um, throughout there because everyone's infected. So you can see um, you don't need full, the full seven days. All right, so let's zoom in on that. So you have something, it seems like it grows up, it goes very fast, and then it's going to slow down. Uh, but basically that last slowing down is the last four. Yeah, that, that, yeah, it's quick at the, uh, it's slow at the start, quick and slow at the end. Okay, they do ask like in the assignment why. Um, and the major, major thing is, okay, at the start, there's f few people infected, so there's few people who can spread. Um, yeah, I'm still, am I still recording? All right. Yep, still recording. Still recording. All right. Yep, the time's ticking. Yep. And, um, yep. Yeah. So, ah, well, 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 okay. Then there's more. So I have two things up. That's what I had. Okay. And it is actually, yep. Okay. All right. And um, so basically at the start, there's um, there's only, uh, well, at, at the very start, there's only one person infected. So, um, uh uh, unless a lot of people had the contact with her, they say it's um there's only yeah there's unlikely there's going to be a lot of contact, um. And at the end, the reason why the growth is slow is because there is not many there's not a pool of a large pool of people to um get infected, so the growth is slow near the end. So it's near the middle where we have a, a substantial pool of people to get infected and a substantial pool people to get them infected. Um, that you see the fastest growth, uh, and the logistic growth model is um, that number at the top is always the carrying capacity, and um, so that's the total population. And uh, what we find is the inflection point, and we can prove this with calculus, uh, takes place at the at halfway up. So when y is equal to uh, one half of the carrying capacity, which is often written as um, capital C. We'll come to that later. So yeah, it looks it follows that sort of growth model, and so slow, quick, slow, and horizontal asymptote. All right. So then, what do we do with that? You bra bracket um, time population bracket comma. It's just I just do that on Desmos. Just real. I just wrote that. I copied it out like this. Well, it's, it's, it's coordinate, um, it's a coordinate system. It's, um, X equals five, Y equals 27. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't told it anything else in context of what's going on. You can label them if you wish. Oh, I don't care. Maybe. Um, oh, let's see. Label all of them. Um, yes. In that, in that respect. Yeah. And X is time a day, day number. Okay, dokie. Um, so since we got the time and we got we got this recording, so uh, okay. Uh, what we do need is to look at the actual one here. Okay, so um, does everyone kind of get mostly how um the infection kind of yeah how that process works? Just practice it for yourself. Come up with your own one. Um, come up with a few. Just practice a few. Um, you might use like you might just use one as your display to kind of instruct the reader how you're doing it or how it's done. So that's that. Okay. So uh, yeah, the first part of the summit basically goes and explains that you you build up this table. So we've kind of done that and we've um we've done that. Uh, set up a spreadsheet that represents the students in our class to complete the analysis outlined above to complete the following table. Graph this information. Explain why it's not an exponential function. Now, if you just graph the first first few days, an exponential function would seem to be a suitable um, function. However, um, there's a bunch of reasons why it can't be. What, what's the most obvious reason why uh, an exponential function would not fit this? There's, there's a, there's a, 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 um, a horizontal limit, uh, like is a maximum uh, limit um, to that. Um, so yeah, it's also um, the other reason, the, the not so obvious one is it has an inflection. Uh, so it, it doesn't keep, an exponential function, its um, rate of growth, if it's a growth exponential, its rate of growth keeps growing. So it keeps um, getting steeper and steeper. This does not. 
once it hits 50% of its carrying capacity or thereabouts, the, that's what the model will do. Uh, as far as the data, it may be slightly off, but very common. At approximately 50% of Y, or P in this case, um, there is an inflection point, and it is still increasing, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate. So it's it's uh, slowing down. So um, it's uh, the DP by DT will be uh, still positive, but a decreasing positive value until it reaches zero, which is when you ha hit the carrying capacity. Um, the model itself um, will never actually use asymptotes, so it never will, but even though the data does. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that that's um, a, something to be talking about in terms of this investigation. Uh, because there is a relationship between like um, logistic and um, oh, and first of all, there's a whole bunch of things about the logistic function. Uh, we'll see that later on. Um, so that anyway, that's kind of what we're going to talk about now. Okay, logistic growth is observed when populations increase. Initially, they seem to increase exponentially, but the level off to approach maximum value. All right, uh, I I think I've explained that in better detail. Um, Okay, explain why logistic growth is the appropriate model. Um, well, basically, it fits the kind of the story here. Um, and uh, uh, it has a, um, they explain later on what the, the C means as far as carrying capacity. And uh, there is a maximum number of people who can be infected, which is the total members of the class. Um, yeah. The rate of the virus spreads is slow, both start and end. Yeah, I, I explained that. Basically, at the start, there's a small number of people infected. So there is, um, it's unlikely they will get a lot of people infected because there's few of them. Um, and at the end, there is um, limited numbers of people who can get infected. So uh, the people ha who are infected have to be in contact with people who are not infected and they're more likely to be in contact with people who are already infected. Um, and that's, um, that, that, make, that slows the growth um, at the end. All right, determine, okay, so using the, okay, uh, we're going to see, um, so I'm going to record this part. So we're going to switch over to TIs. So, <coughs> now, yeah, okay, oh, part two of the full investigation. Um, oh, question, no, part, yeah, part one of this one. Um, part two is we're going to, um, fit the data to a logistic function. Yeah. All right. So let's um, let's get my Y out of there. All right. Now, um, no, uh, you should um, explain, uh, explore the topic in depth, and use up all your pages. And uh, you can take this these concepts uh, and change the uh, the method of the um, of how you carry out. Uh, the random number generator to reflect different things. I will probably record a second video explaining um, some advanced things that you can do to e explore this in greater detail. Yeah, also, um, I'm not entirely a fan of giving exemplars for investigations that you're doing. That just ends up with plagiarism. Okay. <laughs> okay, I can show you actually. Um, I mean, what I've did in the past years that I, I showed off um the specialist maths um direct investigations and showed why they were good. All right, um, so pardon me a moment. Um, I am going to. Okay, we're going to do another window sharing thing, and we're going to look at this. All right, so let's just do this day. Oops, I'm typing the wrong thing. I calculate, please. All right, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is easier to do than um, Desmos ones. Uh, one, two, five, 14, 23, and 27. Okay, then we can do a stat plot. All right, stat plot on, engage stat plot. All right, then we can uh, graph. Now, it's been a while since I, 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 I'm very familiar with doing this on uh, TIs. 
uh, on, on um, Casio's. Um, now, let's just do the window. We'll see it. I mean, basically, we'll just be doing as much as what we uh, achieved on. Um, okay. Okay. Zero to. Okay. Oh, what am I doing? Twenty seven. Okay. Okay, and there we are. All right, and I've actually got a nice window in there, so it does look kind of nice. Now, do I remember how to do this? I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to do the function fitting. Um, so there's more than one way this is gonna cat as far as this goes. Um, but without teaching specialists. All right, stats. Count. Uh, okay, here's a yeah registry. Okay, linear registry called it quadratic registry. Two registry. registry. Logistic. Here we go. So you go into stat count logistic. All right, and yep, that's correct. That's correct list. All right, calculate. All right, so. Maybe we'll even just put that in Desmos. Okay. All uh, right. So we'll do, we're going to store that there. All right. And then we're going to go back to Desmos. So, okay. So this is taking the form of, okay. Now, so we're going to have P is going to be equal to P of X. All right. Can I do a different variable? I always forget that. No, it wants to do as a slider. All right, well, some people are falling asleep. All right, so you can watch it later on. Um, okay, so C is actually 20. This is actually, okay, so what, this is what it does. Okay, um, I'm just going to go with the model that they've generated here in the comments. It's like, because it's not 28 people, it's 27. It's actually 28.8, it's close to 29. But the, uh, the, basically what this has gone and done, this has generated the closest... <coughs> logistic growth model <clears throat> to the data that we've um we have okay so one plus um a 27.45 which i probably should remember i'll do it for something four five all right e to the power of okay minus oh, uh I'll try the minus. It's a little bit key. Um, probably will work. Desmos. 1.407. X. No, that does not work. What if I put in the wrong spot? Ah, oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, that, that'll be it. Thank you. Oopsies, that one. Uh, yep. Yes. Boom. Okay, see how well that fits. Okay, we just did function fitting. Okay, um, now I'm kind of curious because um, okay, now there's something you can do because the idea is that well, oh, sir, how's that going above this? It can't. Um, let's fix that. Okay, uh, I won't fix it. Uh, oh, look, I can I can actually fix it on Desmos as well, but not. I'm not going to fix that. Okay, so I'm going to actually deselect that one, and I'm going to improve on our technique. By saying that, okay, I'm going to say day six. We're going to do, now uh, it seems redundant, but okay, here we go. I believe this will have an effect on the modeling, like um, the registry, because this counts as data points that it considers when it's weighing up the options of what's happening. Um, I'm just wondering, will it explode? No, it won't, because um, I was just thinking, if I give it the aspartone, is it going to spit chips and say, ah, can't do it? Um, no, I think what they will do now, now I've got three points of the same value, so it, it shouldn't be going up. It might go slightly over it, but it'll come a lot closer. And if I do that, oops, undo. Yes, thank you. All right. If I, if I do more, it's more likely to fit that. But it also means it will fit the other points not as well. So I don't want the whole focus to be like just um hugging the asymptote. So I've just gone to, I've just gone to um day seven because that's what the assignment called here anyway. So maybe you had some uh, reason for that. All right. So let's do that on your calculator. So we're going to go back into um, stat block. Uh no sorry, go into stat. 
and edit. And we're going to add 6 and 7 and 27 and 27. Okay, now we've got stat plot here. Okay, stat plot on. Yeah, well, that was already on. Actually, it doesn't matter. I can just go back to graph because I've just added to the data. Okay, so now you've got, okay, but well, yeah, we don't see it. So make sure we can see everything. Okay, there we go. Um, so now we're going to do now. So the way to get it is stat calc down the bottom. We go. Actually, there's there's more. Um, logistics. Grind, grind, grind. All right, so let's try that one. Okay, let's copy those ones over. All right, equals. Uh, the C is now 27, so that's a bit healthier. It's a 27.47, so it's only slightly over. So it would never round up to 28. So it always it would hug that kind of that value of 20, uh, 27, 47. But it would never go over a inch of value of 27, if you consider it that way. Um, so that's that makes a little bit more sense, and that's a little bit more friendly. Um, okay, so we got all right. The A value is now 90. It actually did look like it fit the other data points well, though. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious what's going to happen to everything else because of what I've just changed. Uh, let's see, 4, e to the power of, oops, not that e, e to the power, to the power of, um, minus 1.534, uh, x. All right, um... Yeah, you also notice it's, um, it's, yeah, uh, the model, yeah, I, I, okay, yeah, um, and this is something you can discuss, I mean, it's kind of modeling, it's, okay, uh, with, insofar as, actually, the, as far as the first few data points, um, uh, that, that doesn't, um, really do, um, uh, any much difference on the bottom, I think this is one, you can say that one is entirely better than the purple one, because you say, okay, it's, it's actually trended slightly away from these data points. So it fits those points not so well. Everything's good in the middle. Oh, sorry, what's your question? Uh, very little. It'll have very little effect. You can. Yep. So by all means, I'm just, I'm just saving time. Um, it's, not, it's much of a much as far as that goes. Um, okay. So, but insofar as um, this, okay, the asymptote is much better. Now, one of the other things that isn't working is, um, okay, it's actually kind of like, it trends down uh, and sees less than one person is in fact. I'm not sure where that actually passes through. But it's under, yeah, it's under 0.1 of a person, so it's kind of, okay. Um, but it's, it models, <coughs> what's going on? <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to take that one. I'm going to try to use that one in the following stuff that I'm talking about here. So let's go back to your sum and have a look. All right. No, errors is a scientific concept. You can talk about um, uh, function fitting and R squared values and so things of that nature. I'm not sure exactly sure how to do R squared in relation to this, because um, this doesn't translate. Everything that's R squared translates to linear. Like um, using logarithms, you can change exponential and power models to linears and then work out R squares. That's why it's always R squares. Um, it's like, okay, I was just talking kind of like, how well it fits um, the data. It seems to fit it very well near the middle. Um, uh, the By adding the extra um, uh, day six and day seven, it fits the asymptote a lot better, uh, but it's not fitting the early data points that well. But okay, um, you can comment about such things as well. Okay, um, so th this is more to do with, okay, um, so we've actually gone and fit the data to that. So we've done that. Uh, determine the D disease is spreading at the fastest rate. Okay. So now, um, okay. 
Now you can graph this on your calculator by going into the Y uh, thing. So you can go into Y1 and insert that in here. Um, I'm not, I'm gonna do everything on Desmos from here on. Okay, so at the greatest rate. All right, so let's have a look at that. So, because in the, in the assignment sheet there's actually 23 people. Yeah, not 27. Uh, well, actually, it's twenty-seven because it's like that—that's the carrying capacity. That's the number of people. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, you and uh, remember that you can change your classes. Um, so I modified parts of the assignment. Uh, I just wanted to try this with a larger number of people, so I added um that many more people. I think. Um, I also th I think, I think their investigation is actually wrong insofar as things like. Um, this formula, I think you need to, particularly if you use some sort of rounding process, you, um, there, that won't work. Like basically you won't get the last number. Um, so I, I, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I might come up with a modified version. Um, yeah, that, that, that's also a name from the oldest, um, the, the first version, the two, um, and 27, yeah, 27 is like that. Yeah, so it's actually, yeah. Uh, there needs to be some, some more changes to this assignment by the looks of it, but you get the general idea. Okay, so Okay, so what was I doing? All right, yeah, okay, so I'm looking at okay go to the okay I'm just gonna bring the assignment on that side. So I've got this one here. All right, so Determine when the disease is spreading at the greatest rate now you can do go through this in, in a few ways Um, You should be exploring the kind of the differentials of this in general and I might um in the future lesson, I might just go and uh, put that up on, um, guys, shush. All right. I'll put this up on um, uh, some some other um, thing. Uh, basically, I, I want to go through this, um, this in general, because there's actually a few neat little features about this. All right. So, uh, determine when. Um, when is, okay, there. At, um, basically, at day three. So, um, but there is actually interesting feature in terms of, um, the value of that in here. Okay. It actually is, um, the inflation does occur. So if you work out the Y value of the inflation, so if I go to day three, it is 14, which in this model is peak is, um, yeah, it's, it's halfway up. Uh, and yeah, you'll find that if you go and you differentiate this for the second, dif um, uh, solve for the second differential equals zero, and then take that t value and then put it back in the function, it will actually, um, uh, you'll find it's, um, it's a population, the second differential happens when the p is one half of c. The other features of the graph are not quite as simple. Uh, the carrying capacity is very easy because like when t goes to infinity, that's part c. Uh, P goes to this part basically disappears like the 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 a e to the minus b t that's a negative exponential so it, that trends to zero as t goes to infinity all right um and then p goes to c all right uh and assumptions and limitations I, I think we'll go and discuss that in a future lesson I'm going to stop the recording here all right